do we have people here? Had millions and millions of people that were taken from Africa and brought to the Americas. Wanted to highlight some of the brutal conditions. These were how they were packed on a slave ship. So you can see there's very little room in between any of them. They used it where they were. And sometimes you had sometimes you had like multiple layers of, the, of these people like stacked up, so it'd like be dripping down. But they'd be stacked on to each other. Oh. Oh. Well, they like basically. So they couldn't even breathe. Well, they'd let them out once in a while for fresh air, but yeah, the conditions were horrible. You had a lot of disease that would spread. You had tons of people that would I'd die. I'd die on that boat. Say what? You'd rather die on the boat. What about a? Well, like I mean, be actually like. Then like work on a plantation. I mean, you'd rather die on the boat than work on a plantation. Yeah. I I mean, either one's horrible, but yeah, these people like the conditions were so bad. Sometimes they'd let them out uh, up top to get like fresh air and like exercise for a minute. Sometimes people would just jump overboard. Say yeah, I'd rather rather die than what do you get on be in the situation they were in. Uh, some of them would probably get seasick. Um. Once they were taken to the Americas, they were usually either going to go to Brazil or the Caribbean or like modern day US, like the South, like South Carolina area. And they would often be auctioned off. Once they were on like a plantation, there were a few ways that slave owners would attempt to control their slaves. Can you think of any possibilities? Yeah. Torture. Torture? Whip. Okay, whipping. So, what, what do we imagine from this picture? Like, what do you think? He's got whipped. Okay, he's got whipped. Think that he was like a really obedient slave? No. Maybe after, but at some point, he was potentially rebelling or he did something that really ticked his master off. And so yeah, they absolutely destroyed his back. So physical violence, that was one way that slaves were controlled. Some of them would get used to it though, so then they would come up with other techniques to control them. So they would- Not being fed, maybe? Um, they potentially the thing also the thing also with physical violence if you if, yeah if you hurt them too much then they couldn't really work and earn you money so other techniques that they would use were fear so they would like if a guy was getting rebellious sometimes you'd have slaves that were married and their wife or them could get sold at any point they'd be separated the rest of their lives they'd never see their spouse again and so they might like threaten them saying like we're gonna sell your wife we're gonna sell you we'll separate you or we'll kill one, or we'll kill your wife, or we'll kill your baby. Like they would use fear as a way to try and like intimidate slaves into just like working, and not rebelling. Yeah. Like a like some kind of restraining match. Like if they say like this is your purpose, that could be like a form of brainwash. Okay, brainwashing. Good point. And specifically with that, uh, another point with so like physical violence and fear, they would try to keep slaves ignorant. They wouldn't let them read or write. They would sometimes have laws against them and rules against them reading and writing. Why wouldn't they want a slave able to read or write? Yeah, Omar. So they would tell them, um, when they tell them what's going on, so they, they can't see, like, they would like, assign saying, oh, like an auction, they don't know if there's an auction or not. Okay, maybe not knowing what's going on, it's a good thought, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting thought. If they all could read and write, they could literally pass notes around saying, like, hey, we're going to plan a rebellion this day, this time. But, yeah, the fact that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's way, there's way more to that. It's a ratio sometimes up to like 100 to 1. Oh, yeah, there's way more slaves than slave owners. And so it's like. What, five white dudes chilling in a house? They have like a gun and. The, yeah. They have one gun? Well, what's a gun going to do? Well, sure, the gun's going to maybe take out a few. Okay. Yeah, good, good points. But also on that topic, when it comes to when it comes to like ignorance, if someone's able to read and write and they learn more about the world, they are going to resent the situation there more. If you just take someone, you never like teach them anything. Just say like, oh, this is just how like life is for it's what it is, and they don't know anything else. They'll be more likely to just like work and be content. But if they start reading and they understand, hey, most people, there's people outside this plantation that aren't slaves. Like there's people that live a way better life than this. Like they're going to resent it more. And also they will be 
uh, more powerful in their speech. They're going to be better spoken. They're going to be able to convince other slaves. They're going to be able to communicate those ideas. So they didn't want any slaves learning to read or write. If you all read um, in English, I think it's the biography of Frederick Douglass or autobiography of Frederick Douglass. I know some eighth grade English teachers have their students read it. But like that's a good example. A super well-educated individual, he was a self-taught, learned to read, and he was eventually able to become free. And if I remember right, he was invited uh, to the White House under Lincoln. Let me find a picture of him. Wasn't, weren't he and Lincoln pretty close though? I mean, it's hard to say close. Here's him when he's younger. Yeah. But yeah, I have his I have his book on my shelf. Oh, it looks yeah. a little bit like. Yeah, no, we um, talked about his real history kind of thing. It looks a little bit like Morgan Freeman. Huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right here, so this, he talked about in the book, or he wrote about how he'd overheard his like master saying that he didn't want any of the slaves learning to read or write, and like once he heard that, he was young, maybe like thirteen, and he understood that it was like linked to his freedom that if he became well educated he'd be able to get freedom so he would go out on these like long tasks like he would take these long tasks where he had to like go outside the plantation and he made friends with like all these like white kids around town and they would like teach him how to like read and write and then he like would just learn those learning. kids get like killed for teaching him things how to uh, they get trouble. I, I don't know maybe they'd get in trouble but Okay, so there's ignorance. And then another way that they would try to control them was through religion. They would invite ministers onto the plantation that would give speeches. Most of the slaves couldn't read the Bible, and so they couldn't really like, interpret what it's meaning. But they would read the Bible and say, here it says that you are supposed to turn the other cheek. Therefore, if your slave strikes you, then turn the other cheek, keep working hard, keep doing good for the master, and eventually you'll be rewarded in heaven. And so they would teach those ideas to slaves. So it would keep them complacent. Oftentimes, people, if they are super into religion, they can be complacent to live in horrible circumstances, and they're not as invested in trying to improve the situation like now in this life, because they're thinking of like, oh, in another life, it's all going to be made right. So they used religion as a way to control. They would also say, uh, like they quote scriptures about being like submissive and meek and humble, and they would say this applies to you. In fact, it just be meek and submissive, do what your masters want you to, and you'll be able to go to heaven one day. So yeah, there are all these different techniques that were used to control slaves. Okay, I think that we made it like halfway through that video. So we're gonna go like three minutes in and just finish that. A crucial source of evidence. This is on Timbuktu, this is like an ancient civilization. Some of the world's cities during the Middle Ages. Timbuktu was somewhere around twice the size of London. Timbuktu is twice the size of London.